Okay, hi everyone. Um, hi, welcome back. Yes, welcome to another video. We have another Hallmark premiere for you, part of the New Year New Movies in January. I assume this is the last one before they switch to Valentine's Day. No, because we have the Butler one on Saturday. Uh, yes. Yeah, Love I'm actually the loving the Butler. Yeah, that one actually seems like a, a unique idea because, man, there haven't been that many of these New Year New Movies, but I feel like they're dragging on a bit. Yeah, well, like I said like before, more. once it's past Christmas, everything kind of drags on. I don't know, maybe I'm expecting too much from it, but I haven't been too impressed. Anyway, this one is called Don't Forget I Love You. And you know, the more I thought about this, and I don't know why, why was it called Don't Forget I Love You? Like, I know it's Hallmark, and yeah, they have generic titles all the time, but... There's a message from her mom. All the working titles I didn't think were great. I think we're going to talk about those later towards okay. the end. But anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about what this one is about. So Taylor, played by Emil Yolorup, I believe. Yolorup? Yeah, I think she's um, Danish. A successful professional organizer about to celebrate her 30th birthday finds her regimented and meticulously organized life disrupted after her dad presents her a map leading to a time capsule left to her by her deceased mother. Inside this time capsule, there are six envelopes with instructions to be opened over the next six weeks, each containing a challenge designed by her mom to help conquer her fears and anxieties, help her to kind of overcome obstacles in life and to broaden her outlook in life. Yeah, I think as a kid, she was like super anxious and... and like really type A, really... Um, a bit paranoid, you know. Yeah. So as Taylor is about to embark on the challenges, she meets Josh, her new neighbor, played by Clayton James. I think he's Canadian. Oh, is he? Oh, I didn't know that. He's extremely disorganized and the complete opposite of her. Yeah. So uh, unsure if Taylor can accomplish some of these challenges, she enlists Josh as an accomplice and a new friendship starts to form. And then of course, a romance. Yeah, it's kind of creepy because maybe like, it's like her mom knew that a guy was gonna move in that fucking week. <laughs> Well, I guess, yeah. So uh, this was written by Barbara Kimlika. So she's written a bunch of Christmas Hallmark movies, Christmas on Wheels. That was a weird one about the car. That was a weird one. Christmas Scavenger Hunt, which I really liked, and Poinsettias for Christmas. Oh, Loved yeah. that. That's one of our favorite ones. And we have a female director here. Christy Will Wolf directed this one, and she's done a bunch of other Christmas Hallmark movies too. So she did Five Star Christmas, Christmas Time is Here, uh, and Cookie Cutter Christmas. That's one uh, yeah, I kind yeah, of rewatch yeah. like every year, yeah, yeah. pretty much. I love that one. What'd you think about this one? I mean, I, th I thought it was a cute movie. I, I really liked Emile Allerup. She's just a very likable character. Very and, uh, charming. Yeah, like yeah. I, I cared about everything that was happening to her in the movie. Like, you know right away what's going to happen, but I... I was... Yeah, like, I described it as a neat little package of a film. You know, nothing straight out of the ordinary. Everything followed the formula pretty much to the T. It yeah. was very sweet and heartwarming, especially the scenes with her father towards the end. So I guess this might be a bit of a spoiler. That her mother also did the same challenge. Yeah, and that's how she met her dad. Very... I thought that was really cute. When I, I, I actually, it was sweet. When that happened in the movie, I actually kind of like, oh. Yes, and that didn't happen until the end. Up until yeah. then, it was just well-packaged, neat little delivered on a silver platter kind of a movie. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like it was Nothing as stood out, formulaic. Though. It was a unique story, I guess, in terms of Hallmark. I haven't seen Hallmark do something specifically like a time capsule scavenger hunt, heavily influenced by P.S. I Love You, for sure. That's yeah. what I thought the whole time while while watching it. And that's not the first time Hallmark has been influenced by Hollywood films. No, for sure. I mean, and always, I thought I thought it always. kind of did it justice. Like it, 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 you know, it followed script, but it still had a couple of little things in the movie that were Clayton James' character, his wife, had just passed like that year. Yes. Which I also found a little quick to fucking be jumping. <laughs> Well, it was his wife's best friend, and she made a promise to her best friend before she died that she would take care of her daughter and her husband, um, but but not so much in a romantic role. I never thought it was supposed to be romantic. He just thought, you're, you've taken care of us for a while now, and my daughter loves you, and you're like an aunt. And so he was going to propose to her. Yeah, it seems like- it To seems kind like... of be a full uh, family. I didn't 
really like that storyline. No, honest. that was uh, that was very that was unnecessary. Kinda, it was a little dumb and, and uh, kind of creepy. Even it was like, okay, yeah, what you you have to like find your daughter's mother replacement within the same year. It's like, like, oh, well, it's her best friend. I understand that, was, that you need to introduce some conflict, some antagonism to progress the story along. Like, I understand. Yeah, that, they but they needed to make need somebody to that was a sort of a bad guy, even though she wasn't a bad no, guy she at wasn't. all. It she was wasn't. just they needed somebody. I on the I, side. I think there wasn't a lot of people in this movie. I know that's true. There actually wasn't a lot of cast, but I think like the the conflict or the antagonism or whatever you want to call it should have come from maybe her really scared of like the last challenge and she can't overcome it and she's about to give up, but then overcomes that instead of introducing like this maybe um, like woman who's coming. and interfering in this newly formed relationship like that kind of jealousy kind of thing i don't think it was yeah. needed i mean even but even when <laughs> it's the last challenge and she walks in and, and thinks that he's already he's proposing to, propose. to do with her when yeah. the lady that girl had just found the ring i thought it was kind of cute because she got so flustered I, that scene was good i mean i really liked emil all up she was great but to be honest she had an accent I was a bit distracted by it. I found myself not being as fully engaged in the story as I should have been. See, it, but like, I, I, just... I didn't notice it as much. I mean, you, you notice it when somebody's butchering an accent. She, she, no, she was she, okay. She, I yeah, just yeah. heard it come out in a few words, and it, it, I found it a bit distracting. But maybe that's because I wasn't too engrossed in the story. Maybe yeah, fair enough. As we said, you know, I mentioned that I thought the title was just too generic here. I mean, a, a, a time capsule romance is just as <laughs> generic. Just as generic, but out of the but I guess out of more... the working title. So the, some of the other working titles were Romancing the Birthday Girl, which is really bad. God, that was terrible. <laughs> like, she was kind of romancing him, if anything, but really, that that's way off. Time capsule romance, which is closer to what this thing, is, this story is actually about. <laughs> oh, that's... And Don't Forget That I Love You, which is just more words. Uh, what would you have called it? I would have called it Love in a Tube. That sounds a little off, <laughs> I think. Um, Whatever. Oh, I don't know. That's putting me on the spot. I'd have to really think about it. Love conquers all. or so. I know that's gener That's just as generic. I know. Time Sorry. to cap off love. Time to cap off love. Like, take, maybe. <laughs> take maybe. the cap off of love. Does, you know, something along those lines. We'd have to think about <laughs> it. But And the one they landed on, I think, was the most generic out of all of them. I mean, I don't, don't, don't forget is the purpose of a time capsule, so... It Don't forget sense. I love you. Okay, well, that's fine. Maybe I was just thinking about it too much. Uh, in terms of performance, I really like the side character that she worked with, who is also a Canadian, Devin Alexander. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's a stand-up comedian. I, I found him just kind of really funny. I, 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 all of his lines kind of hit for me. Every time they went back to him, I enjoyed him. So, yeah, I mean, I found it enjoyable. I like to kind of watch films where someone's trying to open up a bit more, expand their horizons, getting over their fears. So in that sense, I, I, I did like it. Yeah. I thought just some of the choices they made, that woman, the friend. and I find that something Hallmark does when the people are clicking too much. The relationship's too easy. So they're like, well, we need something awkward here. So one thing we always like to do, as we mentioned, is we like to go through the Hallmark list to see if the movie had them or not. And we see yeah, just a reoccurring themes. So generic we like to, list we made up. Yeah, like a little checklist. I changed the order completely. Oh, did you? Okay. Now they're kind of in order of uh, <laughs> how they might show up in the movie. Well, that's cool. <laughs> a career-driven lead. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, I mean... The, the she owned her own kind of like organizing company, right? Uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. She so, yes. They can't handle it. Um, a promotion or a deadline? Uh, no. No. There's no nothing impending. She owns the company. Yeah. Um, big city, small town transition. No. No, we're, we're locked. No. Where were they? Colorado? I, don't I know this was filmed in Squamish. They, but that bridge that they were on was so cool. It's a real bridge. Yeah, when yeah, that I'd, looked amazing. Like, like visually, to, it was great. I'd like to go on the bridge. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful shot. Beautifully shot. Yeah. Um, travel issues. I don't think so. No, I don't think we really travel anymore. Uh, they went on a road trip. They but did go on a road trip, but no issue. issue. No. Yeah, that was fun. Um, a big misunderstanding. Yes. The ending. Yeah, well, her mi un misunderstanding, uh, thinking that... He proposed to yeah, the friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, okay. A uh, change of heart. I don't think so. I don't so. think so. No, this change might, of heart. This might be one so. of the first times that change of heart hasn't got it's, ticked it's off. It's a big one. It's usually a big it's one. It's in, like, so. everyone. Someone gets dumped, fired, or dies? 
No, it has to happen on screen, right? So no. I mean, her mom did pass away, but no. And his wife passed away, but that was all. Yeah, it pre- has to like happen in the movie. movie Pre story. Mm-hmm. Second yeah. romance subplot. Uh, yes, that friend, but they they're no not because really that's not a second romance. That's that's the mis- that's a big tried, misunderstanding. Though, second and romance stand- subplot will have to have another set of characters falling in love. Okay, so a no. no yeah. All right, a proposal or a wedding. Uh, no. Uh, selling the house, uh, business, or farm? Uh, no, no. 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 Uh, the almost kiss. I don't remember. Is Why do we always fucking forget this? One? We always forget it because, like, you just assume it's always in there. But we need to print out this damn. I, list. I'm saying no. Uh, okay. And Mad Dash to the airport. No. no Mad no. Dash anywhere. So all in all, it, I, uh, I really the, liked this one. Did it hit the hallmark for you? For me, it definitely hit the hallmark. Yeah. Um, in spite of questionable choices and the generic title, and I, I did think it was heartwarming and sweet and lovely and. I like the theme of um, someone overcoming their fears. It did everything so a Hallmark I, movie should. I, it hit the Hallmark for me too. I, I like feel like theme. I feel like they have to like kind of just be bad to miss the, the like the, really bad. The but mark. we've seen some really bad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's the name of this game. I know, okay. but they're fun. We enjoy them. We'll keep doing them. Hopefully, yeah. you guys are enjoying them. And we'll be back for the butlers. And yeah, we're love. gonna do the butler one. We love doing this. It's fun, and hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Yeah, all um, of that so stuff. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and share. All that good stuff. And we'll see you back soon. Bye. Bye.